Well, Betty, here we are back in France, and uh, in fact, we are way up on top of Mount Saint Michel. This gorgeous rock that they built this beautiful uh, little village on, and of course, the monastery was up here. That's where we left off last time, and there he is. You, you know who that is? Yeah, well, of course, that's St. Michael well, the Archangel. Right, of course yeah. it is, yeah. I have a devotion to him. I, I think he's a great person to call on if you need some help. And he's a pretty strong Pretty, pretty strong, strong character, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I guess that's what the village people did, too, huh? Called Evidently. upon him and used him for inspiration. Yeah. And I think that must be Joan of Arc right there, too. You know, her statue, I've, I, this time when we visited France, I saw more and more statues of, of Joan of Arc. It was uh, very, very uh, interesting to see, especially when, when we get down to Paris. There's a great big, like, golden statue that's very close to the Louvre. Yeah, I learned her. a lot about her on one of our television programs. They had a marvelous story of Joan of Arc. You and watch Channel 49, you find out a lot of good you things. You do, I know. <laughs> I, I, I tell people that all the time, and right. it's wonderful. Well, right now we've gone to the little chapel, which is a little bit further down from the, the big structure that you see way up on top of the hill. And this is the uh, chapel of St. Michael. And uh, Father Pat McCormick, Monsignor Pat McCormick, pardon me, is going to celebrate Mass for us here. I thought there's a beautiful little chapel, and the windows were very, very beautiful in here. It was a lovely place, and uh, we were very delighted that we were able to have it to ourselves and to be able to celebrate the Mass there. In God's relationship with His people Israel, He has always worked with them to bring them to the awareness of His presence in their midst. But oftentimes what we find in Israel was Israel was too involved with the reality that they knew more than Jesus knew. They saw the Torah to be the absolute presence of God in the world for them. And so when Jesus came, he was the real living presence of the word of God in the midst of Israel. But they did not believe him. And so we would find that Israel would then not be given the gift. Even though Jesus tried and tried to make them aware of the gift, they wouldn't receive it because they were closed. We find in our own church, there are times when the gift has come to a point of the presence of God really bringing about his awareness to the people that change needs to happen. But oftentimes people have been blinded. And then we find a few in the community who become saints. They're individuals who have really listened to the word of God. And they, by their own life example, have caused others to change. Most of these realities of change have happened in the ordinariness of the human life and the human experience. Not within the leaders of the church. It seems that at the ground level is where God works his most wonderful miracles. And these have been the saints of our church today and will be tomorrow as they continue to listen to the word of God, open their hearts and their minds and have a great desire to more and more follow him. And thus, the church moves on generation after generation after generation knowing and realizing that God is working in our midst. We saw this, I think, um, in Pope John Paul II, an individual who heard the word of God in a very real and dynamic way, and not only caused the church to look at itself and its relationship with others, but also called the world to look at itself. We find in him, I think, one of the saints of this particular century of which the church will hold in high esteem because he continually told us listen respond and do not be afraid that should be then our motto as we move on in life to listen to respond and not be afraid Betty had you been here before at Mount San Michel Yes, I did, but I didn't do it as extensively as we did this time. We were, we were very fortunate. We had a lot of time and, there. And we time for lunch? That's right, and we did not have the, uh, cr um, any problem with crowds. No, like we got there early yeah. in the morning, which yes, was nice. Yes, yes. 
and of course the view from everywhere is just great. And so now we're waiting for the rest of the people to come down and some of our people right there <laughs> as talking about lunch, having a little bit of, uh, of refreshment there. But now we have moved on. We have gone now to a village and this is the village where St. Therese was born. In fact, this is what you see right here. This is the house right here. And next to the house is a, uh, a church or a chapel that has been built there. And it sort of opens up to the house itself, which we'll see in just a little bit. And one of the nuns who is there, uh, she's going to do some explain to us. You have to listen very carefully because she does have a very strong French accent, but she gave us a lot of information. And here you can see the chapel, which is right here. And if you look right there, you can see into the living room of the house. But let's listen now to uh, this wonderful lady. Welcome to you. We are very happy here to welcome you. Thank you. Here you are in the chapel built against the house of Therese. It was built in 1925 after canonization of Therese. On the first floor of the house, the wall is open, as you see, because from the chapel you may see the battle of the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Arthur, in which Therese was born. On the 2nd of January, 1873. In that room, her mother died when Therese was four and a half, the little girl. Here all furniture are original. The bed in which Therese was born, in which her mother died. The little chair of the baby Therese and some clothes. You may see that uh, uh, when you go around the chapel. On the wall, six pictures, paintings, Therese's childhood in Alençon. Very, uh, very short time because she left Alençon when she was four and a half after the death of the mother. The father and his five daughters moved to Lisieux. In the middle here, Therese was born. The angel sees in the future, on the right, the Carmel of Lisieux, very dark, and on the other side, St. Peter at Rome, canonization, beatification, and so on. There, the baptism of Therese two days after uh, when she was born, after her birthday. Here, little Therese prayed on the knees of her mother before the statue of the Virgin of Smile. You may see also a reproduction of that statue in that bedroom. The original is in Lisieux in the Carmel. There, one Sunday when it rained in Alençon, the family went to church, but not Therese. And she ran alone to the church. There, Therese and Céline in the garden. Céline is the sister of Therese. In the middle, the anointing sacrament of Mrs. Martin, also in that room, in that bed, two days before her death. The parents of Therese, Louis Martin, the father, was a watchmaker and jeweler. The mother, Zélie, was lace maker. Uh, nine children were born in the family, but four died very young. Five girls grew up and became all five sisters. 
uh, in the house when you visit you uh, will see three rooms the living room the dining room the kitchen uh, different pieces of furniture which belonged Mr. Martin or Mrs. Martin clothes which come from his shop lace made by Mrs. Martin I thought the nuns Betty that uh, managed the place here were, they were so kind and so nice they were gracious very Just much gracious so. yeah people, and they were so yeah. delighted that we that we were there now we've gone now into the house of the Martin family and uh, you saw a little bit of the the living room there and these other rooms but here's the you know the original furniture that's yeah. there and the photographs of course too you know you and I mentioned this once before when we were up in Le Sou, that uh, we think that you know even though he was a watchmaker a clockmaker that he was very substantial because the homes that he had this one here uh, that what you're looking at there is a picture of the home where the wet nurse uh, took care of St. Therese and uh, we're looking now at the grandparents of St. Therese and uh, they have all of these wonderful things yeah. here. So it's great to have a saint where you can see, you know, the history of pictorially and not just some paintings as such. And she was pretty much of our times, you know, so Very which much makes so. a big yeah. difference. Yeah. Uh, and, and she was darling. Well, oh, uh, yeah. The whole family was so nice looking. And you, we talked about this before, I think, but both her mother and her father now are in the process of beatification. Isn't that well, something? Well, they should yeah. be. Look at the f look at what they produced. Well, all all of the, all of the, all the, of the daughters family. went into the convent. Yes. And yes. Uh, so they served, you know, they served the population there, and they served the church just very, very well. And it's just it's marvelous. Now here is one of the clocks that was made by Monsieur Martin. And uh, you can see this is really quite quite beautiful. There were several of his works that were displayed here in the uh, in the house, and this is a, I believe, a, one of the um, a military order. Uh, he was, I believe, he was a captain, if I'm not mistaken. But this picture that we see here, yes. this is probably one of the most the common one. Isn't yeah, it? Yes. that you uh -huh. see probably yes. all over the world of Saint Therese. I would hope that the parishioners at Saint Therese Church here in Fresno are watching because they should be really happy to see what what their who their church was named after well they would know that but the actual pictures and stuff well not only that but of course being that uh, saint therese is the patron saint yes. of the diocese of fresno so she's really important to all of us and uh, i'm just so delighted that we had this opportunity to visit the place where she was born and also uh, of course when we went up to Lesu, uh the place where she spent the rest of her life and this is in the this is in the backyard literally of the house and we're kind of looking now you see the chapels on the right hand side and here is the houses on the left hand side so there was a little garden there and wouldn't you know it there were some roses that were growing in the back and of course you always see uh, a, a rose depicted with the saint herself and so uh, I thought this was, that was nice just kind of fit together, yes, didn't it? Yes, <laughs> it's nice you put that in there like that because it's a, so symbolic of her. Very much so. Well, now we are going to head on down the road and we're going to go to Paris. And we stayed at a wonderful, wonderful place. And I thought at first it was kind of going to be at the outskirts, but now we find it's the in place to be. And <clears throat> it's just beautiful, right on the Seine. And so let's listen to our guide as he takes us on a tour. So the whole area was renovated, is renovated, and a very, very nice residential section over here around your hotel, like a big conference center, a lovely garden here, a village called Bercy, and the left bank, and again, completely different character that will differ the right from the left. The left bank is where the university was built, La Sorbonne, 750 years ago, intellectual, artistic, and knowledge center with all the faculties the university whereas the right bank this area and down deep into paris is more commercial financial banks insurance companies big department stores etc offices so it's different groove different characters different movement 
different pride that will differ the right from the left. Because the river was the, the source of life, the source of fishing, and so they fed themselves. And then Paris started to grow towards the left bank with the intellectual center of the university, and then the right bank over here. But again, of course, it's have uh, transformed and gone through alteration and renovation and reconstructions, like all this area, for example, that it's called Bercy. This is the amphitheater of Bercy. They have a basketball finals here and freestyle show, etc. And even that building right across ahead from us in the foreground is the Ministry of Finance of Paris. And it was built recently, maybe nine or eight years ago. This building is a building of what we pay our income revenue towards. So it's not a very popular building, but still, <laughs> it's right there. And nevertheless, they open an art gallery on top. After that, we paid our revenue tax, as I said. We can go and see some pictures up above to make life easier. And in many areas, a special lane in the street is dedicated, is given, is preserved only for bicycles now in Paris. They try to bring that fashion of riding bicycles in town. We celebrate in France on the 14th of July the storming of the prison. Why? Because the prison was the place where the kings at the time sent um, prisoners without judging them beforehand. And when the people caught the prison and de demolished it, it was kind of getting rid of the tyranny, of the absolute tyranny of the kings upon their nation. And then the French Revolution started. The fate of the kings was even bad. They were beheaded later on. But a message of freedom and liberty uh, sprung when that prison was taken. So there is no one stone remain on the ground from that prison. But every year, on the 13th of July at midnight, the celebration of the revolution starts, I'm going to show you where, right now, at a square called La Bastille, where the old prison used to stand. It's a form of an angel, a figure of an angel. You can see it above the trees over there. And on the right hand side, he holds the torch of liberty. On the left hand side, he holds the chains of prison. You see, that's a symbol of the Bastille, of the prison. But 16 years ago, a new opera house was built here. It's like a white elephant, to be honest with you. It shouldn't be built here, but it was by a Canadian architect. And it come on the right hand side, very modern style, with granite, with glass, not with limestone at all. In a way, it can spoil a little bit the character, the architectural character of the square altogether. But again, François Mitterrand gave permission to build such an opera house on the right hand side. So it's a second opera house of Paris because we have already one right in the center of Paris. So have a look please to this building to the small school. Have a look uh, please to the right hand side. Look at that modern building. These names represent those who fell, fought and fell in Paris at the Battle of the Bastille. And of course the genius of liberty, that angel with wings on the top. You can see the chains he holds and the torch. There used to be a lot of waters around here and the whole area was dried into the continent about uh, 450 years ago. And the king at the time, Henry IV, he gave permission to a nobleman to build beautiful mansion houses in Paris with stables, wide doors that allow a horse and a coach to go into the stable. So the whole area is full of beautiful, in French we say, hôtel particulier, which means private mansion houses of a noble family. So a good example is here. Can you please look now to the right hand side? and see that beautiful house with a wide door to enable a horse and a coach to go into the stable. They used to have stables inside, right in the middle of Paris. It was built in the 16th century for Sully, but Sully fled, the family of Sully, they fled the country in the revolution. All the noble men, all the noble families left Paris in the revolution. <laughs> and then these buildings became property of the government, museums, schools, libraries, Ministry of Government. This is a museum today and we call it Hotel de Sully 
because hotel in French is not only a hotel, it's also a public building, you see? It's called Rivoli, Rivoli Street. Now you can see the houses and the facades, look at the limestone. Here and there you see how we clean the buildings with sand, what we call sand blasted. But note, it's about 9.30, everything is shut. Look, when does that city wake up really? At 10 o'clock. We start working only at 10 o'clock. All the business, all the shops, the galleries will be open towards 10 o'clock. All the cafes are open from 7.30 to enable the Parisian to take their croissant and espresso in a cafe. And then we go to work. That's why we have 19,000 cafes in Paris and they open from the morning until two o'clock in the at night. This building on the left, that beautiful building with so many statues everywhere, this is the city hall of Paris. The great city hall, the mayor of Paris that sit here, he supervised 20 mayors of 20 city halls of every district and district. Let's say this is a roof city hall of Paris. So can you please look to the left and slightly behind so you can see the writing Paris 2012 on it because we would like to host we we would like to host the Olympic uh, the city hall was built in a Renaissance style and so beautiful the house is that we are going back there to show you the beautiful facade if you write down names and dates you can put that it was built by an architect called Balu, Balu in the 16th century and there you are look how pretty it is 400 years ago it was built. The name of the mayor of Paris is Bertrand Delanoe. And you can see Paris 2012 and under it, like the rounds in the colors of the flag of the Olympics. It will remind you of a Flemish building, actually. Like in Belgium, like a tower in the middle, a belfry tower, and all the knights up at the top with banners and flags and sculptures. And you know, this esplanade, this area in front of the city hall, it's a spot in Paris where people meet. For example, some people in Paris don't have television at home. We call it Hotel de Ville. Hotel, it's a public building as well. De Ville, the public building of the city. The one next on the right is was built by Napoleon. How do we know? The letter N on it. Sometimes it, if you walk in Paris and you see letters or emblems, you know under which emperor or king it was built. So Napoleon put his N everywhere, so we can tell on the bridge. And the oldest hospital of Paris comes next on the left, although was rebuilt since. But this hospital was by purpose built near Notre Dame, near Our Lady, because then nuns and people of the church took care, took care of the sick people. So this is Hotel Dieu, we call it as well. The main entrance to the High Courts of Justice is on the right. Can you please look now to the right? Merci. Look now to the right. You can see the High Courts of Justice over there. Look how beautiful it is. With a beautiful church, there are two called La Sainte Chapelle, the Saint Chapel Church. That chapel was built to accommodate the crown of thorns that we have received here 800 years ago in Paris by Saint Louis. But today the crown of thorns is at Notre Dame. But we cannot really see it, it's in a safe and they present it to the public once every year, only once a year. And all what we see now is a famous Latin quarter. We call it Latin because the students used to take the lessons in Latin and they spoke Latin after school. Therefore, the Latin Quarter, you see, very narrow streets. That church belonged to the Latin Quarter. It was built to enable students to pray at. With cloisters. Look at the cloisters here, where they used to meditate and to learn, here on the right-hand side. The name of the church is San Severin. It was built in Gothic time, therefore, in Gothic style, therefore, 13th century. Now, of course, the spoken and the taught language is French, but the name kind of was glued to that area and we still say Latin Quarter, because the only language taught is French. So it's a problem, but there is a special school where they prepare people from abroad to study French quick and be able to study in this place. Look, on the right-hand side, it was cleaned 
it was sun blasted uh, two years ago so it's very beautiful all that big huge house that you see on the right is la sorbonne it was founded in 1253 1253 a university was built in paris therefore the character and the movement around it is follow the same way now on the left hand side is a faculty of law and you see plenty of students run in the area young people go to study that is what the latin quarter is all about you see you will see the eiffel tower from everywhere as the city kept the skyline the eiffel tower is so tall you really see it from everywhere 1000 feet high and it was built um, 116 years ago for the exhibition a world exhibition that took place in paris Betty, I have to say one of the things that impresses me about Paris over so many other cities in the world is that you find so many green belts in Paris, so many parks. And, you know, with people living stacked on top of one another in, in apartments as such, I think the people all throughout history that have planned this marvelous, beautiful city did a fantastic job in that, you know, the people can get out, the kids can get out get and out. play in the park. And people can stroll in the park and it was exceedingly hot. You know, you're under those wonderful trees and it's just it's this nice. Car, and gorgeous. they walk their dogs with and they're very clean about it yep. too. And I, w when I was there with my daughter, we had many lunches sitting there. We would take a little from breakfast, you know, and take it out into the park mm -hmm. and eat. Delightful. Oh, it is. It, it, it really is. And it's... Uh, so great to walk, but, 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 yes, yes, the one yes. thing is, these things are huge. I mean, you walk through these, you walk through these parks, and they are, I mean, you can walk for a long, long time. It's not just like, let's walk a couple of blocks. No, 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 no. We're only seeing half of that here. On the other side, if we ever turn around on the other side, it's, it's it goes just as far, you know. But they decorate it. It's not oh, just beautiful. grass. It's just, and they have lots of benches. Hey, and did you remember in this particular park, there was one, uh, there are three Statues of Liberty. There's one that we have in New York, and there are two in uh, Paris, and one of them is in this park, and we may have a picture of it in the next show. Hey, speaking about the next show, that's, you know, that's all the time that we have now, so we want to remind you that if you want to know what's coming up, simply give Betty a call at... 559-488-7443. Four, three. That's right. Betty would be happy to give you all the information she's got. Well, listen, that's it for this time. We will see you next time. Au revoir. Bye-bye. <laughs>